and welcome to episode two of the Fantasy Forge. Now, today we're going to be looking at how to sculpt some green stuff following the poll that I did on Facebook. I know some of you wanted to also see me paint up the Shaman model, but time permitting, I might be able to do it this evening. You might have to wait till Sunday. Anyway, beside the point. Today we're going to look at how to sculpt green stuff. I'm going to focus on a couple of bits like how to sculpt a feather, how to sculpt a skull, and I'll try and show you how to blend in a couple of bits and pieces of a small mod that I'm going to do just for you guys. Alright, so stay tuned, sit down, grab yourself a beverage. Not that kind of beverage, it's too early. What do I care? Have a scotch for all I care. Let's get sculpting. Now, if you are going to sculpt along with this, try and learn some green stuff skills first hand. What you're going to need is, obviously, get some green stuff. Get your colour shapers. A nice clean space in which to work. Make sure that you've got everything you need around you. I have, so let's begin. So first what we're going to do is we're going to prepare some green stuff. Now, not quite how much I'm going to use, but what I always tend to do is use too much anyway, so don't worry about that. Now, when you get your green stuff, it starts off as a two-part, and oddly enough, they decided when they were making this stuff to package it in such a way that the two sides are actually touching, so if you're storing it for any length of time, like the average human being will, because they're not going to use a whole wad of green stuff in one go unless you're making some kind of enormous blob which would be completely useless you tend to get the two parts which are just as they should be and then this bit in the middle which starts to cure as you can see when you try and pull it you end up with this lump of crap and it's completely bloody useless so in my opinion get lost always remove that piece before you start making anything because otherwise if it breaks up and it gets into your model whatever you're trying to build will end up with an unnecessary lump which you've then got to go and extract like some kind of blown kidney right and make a right mess so anyway enough ranting what I do then is I squeeze the two bits together what I tend to do is squeeze twist squeeze twist Okay, it's not particularly hard, but I tend to find that it's the best way to get a good mix. You can hear how sticky that's starting to get. Now, if I was going to be actually modding any kind of model, what I would usually do at this stage is while it's super super sticky I'll just use this to bond the two pieces together rather than using glue uh, I just find that it helps me reposition the pieces better so that you know with a more dynamic pose without having to cut bits of the model away you add material in just to give you that bit of flexibility right now that is ready to start working with. Right, so now I've repositioned the camera so we're not stuck face first into what I'm working with. Time to bring out the cork. Now, like I said in the first video, start with a bit of blue tack. It's mostly blue tack, there's a little bit of spray paint in there as well because I'm going to spray something. I need to stick it down occasionally. I'll use this, doesn't seem to bother it at all. Still stays sticky. Blue tack, cork, picture pin. Crap on there for the last video. Yeah, we've got some focus. All right, so what we're going to need: cork, green stuff. Try not to stick it to anything. Always handy to have one of these. Little toothpick. Sharp knife, colour shapers. Right, so in the arsenal that I've got at the moment, I happen to have flat chisel, 
Uh, semi round chisel, I think they call this. Uh, you see, one side's flat, but the other side's sort of round. It's got this weird chisely bit missing from the top. So we've also got this bad boy, some kind of pointy thing. I don't know what the technical name is for it, but you can see it's quite sharp, but still it's pretty flexible because it's the grey ones, so no problem there. And you've got this one which is like a bisected cylinder. It's not the most useful tool, but I find it's good for like getting product right in and round arms, armpits, neck pieces. Yeah, it's got its uses. So got all of those. Got my giant wad of kitchen roll. What else am I going to need? Um, I don't think I'll need anything. If I do, I will mention it because I'm trying to tell you exactly what to do so that you can make something that's at least as good as mine. So, one of the things that was included in the first model that I had out there was all of the feathers on the shaman's headdress. Now, I already did a little skull for you. In quickly last time, so I will do another one. But right now, what I'm going to do is start off with a feather. So take a small piece, figure out how big it needs to be. So I'll get the uh, the model down here. Look at the size of those. Do some sort of comparison. So snip off a bit that's a little bigger than what you want. Roll it into a rough cylinder. And what you need to do is sort of flatten it out. As you flatten it, it will sort of stick to your fingers and stretch out a little bit. This isn't a problem, but do be aware that if you stretch it too far, it will become too thin. It won't take the textures properly because it will just chop through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it onto this cork. Now, you could lay it on something flatter if you wanted a flatter feather but I always find having raised birds myself you never get a truly flat feather unless it's a wing feather and if you're going to do wing feathers feel free but most of the time they've always got a slight curve to them and green stuff even after it's cured is slightly pliable so don't feel like it's a one stop shop that you have to get all the detail in the first time now, uh, you're thinking, oh, it's going to stick to there. Yes, it will stick to here. But you can take off any of the cork that sticks to the green stuff once it's dry. It will pull away fairly easy. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, there will be a little bit of stickage. But to be honest with you, you can pull that away fairly easily because the green stuff is fairly flexible, fairly tough, and the cork is brittle. Which feather shall we do? Okay, let's start with, say, this one here. Okay. Right, so I'm going to start by giving it a bit more shape up one end than the other. Just flatten it out a little bit so that you've got nice flat edges and something to work with. Alright, that makes sense. What you should be able to do is find your centre line. Okay, so first of all, just Gently mark it with the back of the blade, not the front of the blade. You don't want to chop into anything. You're literally just making a mark. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you can neaten this up later. It just gives you a guide to work from. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to rub that along the channel that I made just to neat it up. It softens those marks down so you don't get any scratchiness or anything. Right. 
going to do now is just make a mirror mark on the other side. Now remember a feather has a quill right down the middle so just try to remember what it is that you're sculpting before you actually put your marks onto it. You sculpted a feather so it's going to have fairly delicate features but there's one prominent bit right down the middle which is the quill. It's the only stiff bit of the feather. It should be uh, fairly obvious unless you've been living in outer space and you don't know what bird is to bring one to memory. So from here what I tend to do is try to get some idea of the direction of flow of the actual fibrous bits of the feather that make up the flat edge. Right, so that's that bit done. Now it's looking a bit lumpy compared to say the detail that's on this one here. The reason for that is it's not finished yet. So once you've got these basic details in, it's time to go back over it. Now what you'll find is that even though it's tedious, once you've got the base marks in, you don't have to be so specific, you can just kind of bosh this down lightly and it will make marks that are deep enough to break up the bigger marks but shallow enough to not make a massive dent. So you're implying lots of fibres rather than just a few big chunks like teeth. Right, so might seem a little tedious, but that is the long and the short of it. Now, from here, if you feel like your textures are a little too obvious, you can just dab it with a thumb. I would say if you do that, you might have to go over and retexture it a little bit because naturally your thumb's going to have ridges all over it, and this stuff is so pliable that it will take your shape straight off your fingerprints and all over your model. It's easily remedied. But I would say, don't worry about how lumpy it is unless there's something that's really sticking up. I'm only showing you this so that you can hopefully see the difference. I'm not sure I'm picking it up right on the camera, but what the hell. Okay. So I think you can just about see the bits of fingerprint there. I've taken off some of the details, some of the high bits, but easy to just go back over take those back out so all your hard work isn't lost same as if you're making any kind of model and you do get some minor fingerprints on it a minor smush here and there we all do it put your model down to stand have a cup of tea turn around and you put your fat elbow right in the work next thing you know you've got something stuck to your elbow and it's tedious because your hairs are all stuck in it nah, nah, nah. don't worry about it as long as it's not completely pancaked you can usually resurrect your work fairly quickly right, so that is basically how I start my feathers now, usually I'd leave this to dry not dry to cure rather and then I'll give it its shape but since I'm doing this here now I might as well try it now now you'll notice that usually one side of the feather is slightly broader than the other. Now I'm sure these have technical scientific names, neither of which I know. So what I would say is, if you've got one side that's shallower than the other, use this as the shallow side, it's not hard. Just go in and cut. 
Okay. Push down into the cork and then pull to one side. And you can save that green stuff for later. I say later, you haven't got that long to work with it, but I'm sure you'll find something to do with it. You people are fairly good at coming up with ideas on the fly, otherwise you wouldn't be creating things, you'd be sat in an office worrying about the price of cheese and how many hours in the day you can squeeze out of people. So what I usually find is that on these feathers you will often have on the short side you have the shorter kick up at the end and on the broader side you usually have a wider curve so you'll see it on this one so you sort of end up with like a blade I don't know Mascal. don't worry about that just glue that back on so pick out where you want the tip to be usually just make a little mark so that I can see it you work towards that so what I'm going to do is take from about here right the way across just, just chop it Okay, now you can see the front is already starting to take shape. What I tend to do is just take a slightly longer one, cross, bring it into some kind of leafy shape, and then make it a little bit more extreme. And then we can go back in and pull it right in down the bottom. So that is starting to look more like a feather. Now obviously this is an oversized feather, for the scale on which we're working this would be something far bigger and more ornamental than your everyday sort of like bird feather or something, this would be like an ostrich feather, um, some kind of eagle or something I don't know, but one way or another, that's the bare bones of it. Now what I usually do is at this stage, this long tool, get out of it back to the chisel. What I usually do is try and taper the edges right off, okay, because it's a feather, it's a fairly two-dimensional object, and where you've cut away you'll usually find that you've made some kind of ridge, some kind of harsh flat edge. Now, unless you're in some kind of weird cubist universe, feathers shouldn't have sharp edges that are like brick walls, they should have nice thin tapering edges because they are organic and they are designed to be thin and light rather than chunky like a shoebox so what I'm going to do is just blend that out a little bit now don't worry about destroying all the textures and stuff that you've already put in because this only adds to it one of the reasons that I don't go overboard with detail in the first place is because you're always adding more every time you make one of these little edits you add more texture it makes it more subtle and just gives some uh, for your paint to stick because unless you're going at a hammer and tongue like the paint the side of a house you will probably be using dry brushing and dry brushing especially when it's used properly will stick to all these little tiny lumps and bumps and imply texture just neaten this ridge up in the center I think we are just about done now obviously this needle still needs to cure so 
as long as you've got some kind of quill at the bottom what I do is I just pinch it between my nails and then just roll it from side to side you end up with a nice feather style quill now you can put some nicks in it now or you can wait until it dries just to give it that feathery goodness bonds there right now time to come back to the feather from earlier so this one has been sat and is completely dry actually did this yesterday so what I'll do is just get my finger now under the tip you see it's quite flexible you don't have to worry about it snapping so much gently pull away it should peel off quite nicely and what you're left with is a nice flat feather now you'll notice that it has got that curl from where it was round the cork that is not a problem and you'll notice there's a couple of bits of cork flux on the back now like I was saying to you before what I tend to do is just scrape the blade on the back because usually the crumbly nature of the cork allows it to break away from the green stuff without too much residue usually when I'm working with feathers if they are going to be attached to something I will either do a backside to them with a thin layer of green stuff and just texture it or they're going to go flat against the body of something whether it be an actual animal or part of a piece of clothing etc so that it's cleaned up now if you wanted to take away some of that curl you can just stretch it out a little bit and bend it the other way now I would say if you are using a standard 50-50 mix it's plenty pliant but it may still end up curling back the other way the best way I've found to alter this is give it a blast with the hairdryer just to apply a bit of heat other than that you can use body heat if you've got particularly hot hands like I tend to do just rub it between your fingers it heats it up a little bit just allows you to hold it in position I tend to bend it further the wrong way than I want it to be wait for it to cool down and then let it go and it tends to straighten up now obviously I haven't held it long enough for it for, to actually cool down enough so it will retain its original shape but a little less extreme and that's ready to do with what you will if you wanted to do something on the back side it's pretty straightforward just add some more green stuff that I prepared earlier now try not to add too much mass and bulk because remember it is a feather and even though we are only trying to imply texture you still need something there for it to grab onto so let's apply that there just stretch it down pull off any excess literally just stretch it out make sure you don't get any crap from the new side onto the old side get my hairy hand out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing that's the good side that we already did just gently tug those edges it should peel away anything that you've clumsily gotten on the wrong side like I've just done and you should end up with a nice bonded surface on the other side which is nice and pliant and ready to take a bit of texture now, same as we did before, you're going to want to find your centre bar, or the quill, whatever it's called. Easiest way to do that. The back of the blade, just press into it. Just like so. 
Now this is the underside, so unless you've got plans for showing off the underside, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm just going to pop this down so I can apply some pressure, get these actual individual feather marks into the clay. Just go back in and redefine that quill to the center. And that's probably good enough to be an underside. <laughs> 